Dating has never been easy, but for some, it did get a little easier as apps became the go-to way to meet a significant other. But has the introduction of technology helped or hindered the pursuit of love? Many millennials are in a very unique position, knowing what dating was like before and after the apps took off. And while millions are sticking to those apps, many are starting to go back to the basics. Our Alex Perez spoke to some singles about how they're balancing dating in the digital world world with more organic methods. How do you ask for a date? Uh, Ian? Well, uh, how about a date? It's a tale as old as time, the search for the one. Good night, Woody. Hi there. And it doesn't seem to be getting any easier. Today's millennial is, uh, it's complicated. Dating as a millennial is impossible. Dating as a millennial is confusing. Dating as a millennial has been just plain bad. <laughs> More than a decade since their launch apps have become unavoidable players in the modern dating game. A 2022 Pew Research survey found that 3 in 10 U.S. adults say they have used a dating site or app, and 1 in 10 partnered adults say they met their current significant other through a dating site or app. At the beginning of their dating life being mostly in person, some millennials are saying enough is enough to dating app culture in favor of returning to what is now known as IRL or in real life. To get a clearer picture of what today's singles are up against, I sat down with four singles, Alex, CJ, JT, and Kara. Okay, so we're talking dating and apps. Tell me sort of like how you identify and what you look for when you're on an app. So I'm queer and like I think apps are really good for like niche communities, which is like queer community, rural communities, religious communities. I came from a small town where it's not the safest to be like going up to strangers and be like, you're hot, let's go out. I'm in that generation of I was born before the internet. I remember when meeting someone off of an app or a chat room or, you know, just any kind of online meeting was very, very risky and scary. So there's certain things that I just pretty much prefer to like do the, you know, in real life thing. It's just like, how else are you gonna meet people? Like, I've never been hit on at a bar. I feel like people don't like come up to you for whatever reason. It's intimidating, especially if like somebody's like standing with a gr group of friends, yeah. like yeah. feeling safe to do that, especially yes. as a woman is like a big thing. It's to touch off of these two in the IRL setting at the bar, like going up to someone, that like context doesn't exist yet that you have to like create to like talk to someone where like, on the apps that's already like okay we're both here for this we both know that so like it's kind of an icebreaker in that way do y'all remember dating in real life without the apps yes i do <laughs> yes i do i just told on my age really? <laughs> but well, yes i do i um dated somebody for the majority of my 20s so i didn't get into like the dating sphere until i was like 27 which is eight years ago. And like, it was, <laughs> it was the apps. The apps was what everyone was on. So I was like, okay, I guess that's what I gotta do. How many of you, maybe by show of hands or a quick story, have had sort of unwanted advances or things that you were unhappy with sort of happen to you that you have to fend off? I did have someone who, you know, just pretty much thought because the first meeting was out to dinner and drinks, that like that automatically greenlit them to be extremely flirtatious to the point where they were like saying sexual things to me. And I mean, the minute that I was in my car, it was like block, delete. <laughs> yeah. Just like the normal, like people coming right out of the gate after you match with them being like really hypersexual. And it's just yeah. like, ugh. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Despite this, some singles still feel these apps are inescapable. Is it one of these sort of necessary evils to be people, or would you rather just not deal with them at all? Like, we're at a place of burnout. Not to mention, it's not a good way to get started when you are starting your dating journey. Yeah. Um, I remember being that person that told, you know, the person that was interested in me in high school, like, you got to come pick me up from my house. I'm not about to, you know, like, you got to talk to my parents and ask them, can you take me outside? Dr. Jack Turbin, assistant professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at UC San Francisco, says many of these singles' concerns are backed by research. The incentive for these apps are just for people to be on them a lot. So they're not necessarily having their incentives aligned with people having better mental health or forming long-term deep relationships. Dr. Turbin also points to the disproportionate and at times even contradictory mental health impacts of these apps. For straight cisgender people, they have all of these 
milestones through their early life to develop skills in romance and intimacy. They also have sexual education programs that are geared specifically towards them that help them understand how to integrate uh, sexuality into relationships, how to do that in a healthy way. But LGBT people don't always have those things. And often what they're turning towards are these different apps that allow them to connect with people. The problem is those apps just aren't designed to develop romance and intimacy. They're mostly designed around sex and more casual encounters. And yet, despite the drawbacks, walking away isn't easy. The realm of behavioral addictions we often think about slot machines as the classic example. And the reason slot machines are so addictive is that the rewards come at unpredictable intervals. And some people have compared dating apps, hookup apps to that exact thing, but the, the reinforcing thing that you're getting is either affirmation uh, or orgasm or some sort of sexual um, excitement. And we know that those stimuli are really, really rewarding. So it's not surprising that sometimes people get really, really hooked on the apps. Yet some singles are taking a bold step, stopping their swiping in favor of meeting IRL. At this speed dating event in Chicago, daters of all genders and sexualities are welcome, looking to walk away with a chance at love. Hi guys, how you doing? Good, so I've checked everyone in, so I'm gonna start the clock for the dates to officially begin. Katie Conway, founder of Hot Potato Hearts, says the group was born out of her own dissatisfaction with dating apps. The apps really were just, they, they're very disconnected. All you're doing is like looking at people's pictures and judging them. And that um, was not what I was looking for. I was like looking to just like talk and like connect with people. Technology has, you know, done so many things for us, but it sounds like sometimes going back to the basics can work out. Yes, I, technology's great. It's awesome. It's super helpful in many ways, but it can never replace just like a one-on-one. -on -one. There's so many people who might think, oh, meeting someone in real life, that's so old fashioned. What, what did you say to convince some of those people to try that? I would probably ask them why they don't like to have fun. <laughs> I'm much more like want to meet people in person, you know? <laughs> Above all else, Katie says the group seeks to create a safe and inclusive community. Maybe I will meet someone to go on dates with, or maybe I'll join a book club or learn about a new podcast or something. It'll just be an intentional night of connecting with deep, different people without any expectations of where it will go. And for those taking notes, we had to ask what some of the green or red flags daters should be looking out for. Big one, does not have any social media at all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Way big red flag. Could be, could be. Two red I flags, one say, green. Could be. Oh, a little bit of yeah. both. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have social media, who are you hiding from? Comes up to you at a bar to ask you out. Oh, green five all day. Asking to split the bill. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if you said, hey, I want to take you out on a date, that means you initiated that you want to take said individual out. Like, if you ask the person out on the date, then that means that you take care of it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm the same way. Like, that's the, like, rule I operate under, I think, where I... I'm taking you out, I'm paying for it. Now, I used to do this and I don't think it ever worked out, so I wonder what you guys are gonna say. <laughs> Texting immediately after the date. I think it's cute. It's cute. cute. You know, you safe me. Yeah. I must have just been meeting the wrong people back then. <laughs> That's the thing I hear from everybody, is we wanna see enthusiasm, we wanna see like desire, we wanna see that you're excited about this because it has become so gamified, it has become so many options. And it's in the spirit of that enthusiasm that we see connections like these paving a path forward in the ever complex quest for modern love. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.